guys, Mr. Purdy here. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do a, a recipe that we can cook in the outdoor classroom. I'm going to give you the instructions before we go out there, show you how we're going to cook, uh, how we're going to cook it, and how it's all going to be work. So first of all, let's go over the ingredients. We're going to be making a beef stew today. Um, I've uh, I've gone. I got two pounds of uh, stew meat, uh, beef stew meat. I have five pounds of potatoes. I have a medium-sized onion, two carrots. We have salt and pepper, and one of my favorites is uh, dumplings, so we're going to be, be doing a uh, biscuit bake on top, and they're kind of like dumplings. And also we have a pitcher of water. We'll be needing to prepare all of our food inside in order to take it to the outdoor classroom and cook it out there. So we're going to start inside and work our way outside. One of the uh, first steps that we're going to do when we go out into the outdoor classroom is to begin preparing our meat. Um, I chose a beef stew, a beef stew meat. This time, uh, you, we could just use a hamburger. This recipe is typically for 10 students, um, and two pounds of hamburger is what's called for 10 students. I have two pounds of stew meat, so for every 10 students, we'll need two pounds of meat. So if we have more than 10, if we have 20 students in our class, you'll have to figure that out. I'm going to salt and pepper our meat inside the while we're inside, while we're still preparing it. Uh, that way, when we get outside, and we start browning our meat, it'll already have the seasonings on it and we'll cook the seasonings in inside of the Dutch oven. We use one tablespoon of salt and pepper to season the meat. Okay, so we have our beef meat ready. Now we're going to put a lid on that so it's ready to take with us to the outdoor classroom. Um, our next ingredient we're going to work with is our carrots. Now, um, I'm going to have fifth graders peel and, and slice carrots. I have these uh, uh, peelers are a little easier for smaller hands to use. Uh, just remember, uh, they are sharp edges, and you want to keep your fingers away from them. We're going to slice, um, and we're going to we're going to uh, peel the carrots, and then we're going to cut them into small cubes, so they fit. They're going to be small cube carrots inside of our beef. Now I have two carrots. I'm just going to slice them into oh, almost an eighth to a quarter of an inch thickness. I just want them as they cook in the stew to be small enough that they will cook so they're, they're tender but yet big enough so they don't cook away. So we're just going to slice them into about this size piece. You've got to be really careful though guys working with a knife um, that you're careful and take your time so you don't cut a finger. And there we have our carrots. We'll take another container. We will put our carrots and our potatoes together in a container. We'll set this aside and we'll start working on the potatoes. Same thing with the potatoes as with the carrots. Uh, being really careful, you can still cut yourself. Those are still sharp. So you want to be very careful as you're peeling the potatoes. We're going to peel the potatoes completely and then we're going to dice them up into small squares so they again will cook in about 20 minutes in the Dutch oven and they'll be tender and they'll definitely be good in our beef stew. Once the potatoes are peeled and washed we will be very careful to slice the potatoes in about quarter inch slices and cube them. Here you notice that the potatoes have been cubed and we will add them to our carrots and they're ready for the they Dutch oven. Diced up. Um, so we have our container with um, carrots on the bottom, and they are ready to be put into a container and set the aside with our meat. We're going to be preparing our onion. We will not be putting our onion with our uh, potatoes. With taking the outside skin off of my onion, and I'm going to dice it much the same way that I've done the potatoes. And here we have our sliced or our, our diced onions. We're going to be putting those into a separate container, but when we go outside, the onions will be separate from the tomatoes, or from the potatoes, and from the potatoes. Okay. So we have our we have our seasoned meat with salt and pepper. We have our carrots and potatoes. We have our onions. We have our water. We'll need water when we go out to the outdoor classroom, and we also have our canned biscuits now. When you start thinking about cooking outside, uh, a couple things you need to keep in mind. 
this, this today is a nice calm day. If the wind were blowing, we would not be able to do this because the sparks and coals from the uh, the charcoal could could start a fire. And we're in the outdoor classroom. We don't have um, wa running water to be able to put a fire out. Um, it, I have a nice uh, a nice rack that I've built to be able to hold my Dutch ovens. Um, here's one of my Dutch ovens, and also have a holder for my lid. Um, and we'll be using that later on. But before we even start thinking about cooking, uh, about 15, 20 minutes beforehand, we need to think about uh, running our charcoal in our starters. Now I have two different kinds of starters. Um, this is an actual charcoal starter and I have another uh, type of starter. Um, I'm going to use a, a, a nice charcoal, a good charcoal uh, that I don't have to use a lighter fluid with. But I'm going to need to get these started before um, we brown any of our meat or any of our food ready. So, yeah. Charcoal is the uh, the fuel that I'm going to use for my Dutch ovens. But when you think about it in history, uh, if you were a pioneer going across the Oregon Trail, the fuel you would have been using instead of charcoal like this would probably have been buffalo chips. Buffalo chips uh, uh, were all over the prairie. You'd get, the kids would go out and they'd gather buffalo chips and uh, they would light them on fire and use them to warm their Dutch ovens. We don't have any buffalo chips, so we're going to use charcoal. We came outside about 30 minutes ago to start our coals, and as you can see, the coals are very hot. Um, there's some tools that we will need while we're outside. Um, one of them is an insulated glove, so if we work with the coals, we always wear these gloves to keep our hands from getting burned. Um, the, uh, the coals are obviously very hot. Another a tool that we will need is a pair of tongs because we'll have to move some of these coals around. Now, um, you see I have a stand here for working with my Dutch ovens. Um, sometimes we won't have those when we're working at uh, in an outdoor classroom, but we're going to use this today for the sake of being able to see it better at the video. Now, the Dutch oven is made out of a cast iron metal. Uh, the cast iron metal is very thick and it uh, warms up quickly and it distributes heat evenly. Um, you, you'll notice on the, the Dutch oven there is this ring on the top. Actually, Andrew Jackson designed that ring. Uh, before they had the ring, the, the buffalo chips or uh, the wood chips would fall off. Sometimes they would fall off when the lid was being removed and it would fall into whatever they were cooking. And that does not sound appealing. So, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to start by just warming up the bottom of our Dutch oven. I'm going to move it aside and we're going to put a bed of coals uh, on the surface where we want to start heating up. So I'm going to take my coals I'm going to put about 20 coals to so help get my Dutch coals. oven. I'm going to set my Dutch oven right over the top and to help it also warm up I'm going to apply a few coals to the lid to help heat up the inside of the Dutch oven. Again, keeping in mind in pioneer days, this would have been buffalo chips instead of Kingsford charcoal or some other <coughs> kind of charcoal. Okay, so we have the Dutch oven starting to warm up. Uh, it won't take long and we'll actually put our meat in and we'll start cooking our meat. Okay, my Dutch oven has been sitting here for about five minutes with the coals warming up the insides of the oven. I'm now going to apply, I'm going to put our meat inside of the Dutch oven. We'll let our meat begin to brown and put the lid back on the Dutch oven. We'll let it sit for about five minutes. We'll open it. Uh, mix it up again our and then add our cooking onions. for about five minutes. So let's go check it and see how we're doing. Oh, and look at that, the steam. The, uh, the Dutch oven is known for holding the moisture in food. Uh, it really seals up tight and you can see that the, the meat is starting to brown up nicely. I'm going to go ahead and add the onions now. And I'm going to mix the onions in with the meat. Now the, uh, the Dutch oven will cook the onion down almost to where it's um, it disappears because it holds that heat in so well. So we're going to let this cook for about another five minutes and then we're going to look at adding our potatoes and our carrots. I think we're going to be ready to add the potatoes.
Oh yeah, it's looking really good. The onions have been cooked down. And granted, this is only about 10 minutes that the onions have been in the Dutch oven. So, the next thing we're going to do potatoes. is add our potatoes and our carrots. We'll add them to the stew. I can just see the water here at the, at the surface where the, the potatoes and the carrots are at. I'm going to cover these and we're going to let it cook for 20 minutes. Then we'll come back and we'll test to see how tender the potatoes and the carrots are. Now we said we were going to leave these um, in there for 20 minutes. About every 5 minutes we'll spin the lid. And that will it's prevent any hot minutes spot. that the, uh, the potatoes have been cooking. If I check a potato against the side, they mash easily. So we are in the last five or ten minutes of cooking, which means we're ready for our biscuits to go on top. So we are just going to layer our biscuits on top of the liquid. Okay, we have the, we have the biscuits on top of the uh, stew. I'm going to add just a little bit of salt and pepper onto I will the top cover of the stew. Few more coals. I have a nice hot bed of coals on the top for our last five minutes of cooking. These hot coals will help make sure those biscuits get cooked all the way and they have a nice brown surface on the top. And okay, the biscuits have been on for 10 minutes now. About halfway through, we checked uh, they were starting to brown on the top very nicely. I removed the the charcoal from the top. If you look here. I have a clean lid, and I believe we're done. Uh, we have a finished product. We have uh, dumplings or biscuits on the top with a beef stew on top. Off. Off. And there we have a nice bed of biscuits. And we'll take a couple of biscuits. Take a biscuit. Notice on the top they're nice and, and uh, brown. On the bottom they're more like a dumpling. And then for the beef stew. And there we have beef stew with dumplings. A Dutch oven recipe that we're going to cook in the outdoor classroom.